Hey there guys, it's Liz here and tonight we're going to be talking about why I no longer after, you know, years of years and years of being a popcorn addict don't have popcorn as a daily snack and I want you guys to understand why you may want to reconsider how often you and your family have it as well and if you do have popcorn help you guys to understand which ones to go for now I told my husband I was gonna hop on here and do a live on this and he's like why are you choosing that topic and I'm like you know how many people ask me <laughs> in either the seven-day reset or my customized coaching clients they're like you know why isn't popcorn on the list are we allowed to have it because you know, you hear of Skinny Pop and you hear about all these different popcorn brands, right? Guys, do me a favor. If you are a popcorn lover or anybody in your family is a popcorn lover, hit the heart button a couple of times for me. I want to know because for me, my husband used to actually have to hide it. How many of you guys have tried Boom Chicka Pop? Like my mom literally said to me last week, she was like, whatever popcorn that is in the purple bag, we've been getting it and I'm addicted to it. I was like, that is crack, right? It's literally like, it's like their kettle corn. How many of you guys have had that before? Oh my God. I remember the one time Mike actually had to hide it in the grill. Like we, he went and put it inside the grill. He's done crazy things with my trail mix, but if you guys have been following me long enough, <laughs> Mike used to hide my popcorn because I literally would go through it like in a day. And I know many of you guys hopping on, I've talked to you about this before, that this purple bag of Boom Chicka Pop is freaking addicting. So I literally would like every other day have to restock this. And I tried getting the small little individual bags thinking, oh, that'll be my portion control. And you just eat more than one bag. Like it just doesn't work. <laughs> but there's a reason I'm talking to you guys about this besides the fact that like I have an extreme obsession with popcorn. Growing up, I literally would just like throw some in the microwave. I wouldn't get the air pop stuff. Literally would throw it in the microwave and I would need a bag to myself. And that was just kind of how my family was too. Like we all made our own bags. Sherry, yeah, you said it's so addictive, right? And you see it on the side of the, of the bag on the nutrition facts that it's, it technically is one of like the lighter snacks and you have the things like skinny pop and whatnot that it looks like it's a lower calorie snack. So you're thinking it's probably something good to just kind of munch on while you're watching TV or like binge watching Netflix. So I want you guys to understand why I no longer within like the last year or maybe year and a half, I no longer keep popcorn in the house. I no longer get it because I don't trust myself with it. How many of you guys have things that you don't trust yourself with? If you guys have other foods, it doesn't even have to be popcorn that you like don't trust yourself to bring it in the house, put it in the comments. I'm really interested to hear. Like, I don't care whether it's like cookies or peanut butter or whatever. I know many people that are my clients cannot have a full jar of peanut butter. Like it's just impossible <laughs> without them falling off. <laughs> so guys, I want you guys to understand that the one of the top six inflammatory foods is corn, right? So like popcorn can be a nice, light, airy snack, but the reason why a lot of people, if I tell my clients or my tell my seven day resetters, like guys, listen, if you start incorporating popcorn again, I want you to realize like how your gut feels. I want you to kind of audit that. And people will be like, oh, I realize I have a little bit more bloating or I just don't feel as great afterwards. And so the first point I wanted to make is that just because you eat something and you don't necessarily have this like crazy reaction to it just because you're not running the bathroom afterwards or like throwing up getting sick it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for your body like just having a little bit more like gas or bloating is a sign that something's not right in your gi tract it could be the balance of like your microbiome and you need to start to get some of the um the good like healthy cultures in there but a lot of times it's because it's a food sensitivity so popcorn is that way for most people. And so I want you guys to just kind of audit that as to not just, you know, cutting out popcorn completely, but be careful how much you bring it in. Because for me, it was not just a cup. Like I was not just one of those people that was like, oh, I'll have a handful here. I am downing the bag. That stuff is crap. I swear. <laughs> I swear. I love seeing you guys comment on here the things that you guys can't keep in the house, like me with popcorn. Nicole says Rice Krispies, popcorn, Oreos. Aaron cannot do peanut butter. Um, I know, uh, okay, Melissa hates popcorn. <laughs> uh, Sherry can't keep Reese's peanut butter cups in the house. Don't eat them all in one sitting. Yes, right? Guys, let me know what your like obsessive foods are. So that's one for me. I can't keep it in there. It's not just because of portion control, but it's literally because of what it'll do to my gut. And so for those of you guys that are like me, that whether it's a microwave popcorn and you're doing like, Act Two or Orville Redenbachers or Pop Secret, you know, some of the ones out there, or you're looking for like an organic microwave popcorn, 
there are a couple things I want you to keep in mind for microwave popcorns and then what you want to do for air pop popcorns. Because I know a lot of you guys, maybe you'll hear some of the stuff that I say, but you're like, all right, well, that's not enough of a reason for me to stop eating it. So I want to give you guys at least the healthier option that you understand could at least be better than going and getting pop secret that has a bunch of like partially hydrogenated oils and a bunch of palm oil and soybean oil and uh, PFOAs. So what I want you guys to realize about microwave popcorns is majority of those bags are lined with PFOA. So it's like a non-stick thing because you don't want your popcorn like stuck to the side of the bag. So they put that like non-stick stuff in there and it's the same thing that would line like Teflon pans. And we all probably know by now how dangerous that carcinogen can be. So that's a big reason why you want to stay away from microwave popcorn. Um, go and try and do something that is naturally air popped. They do have ones that um, will say clear on the box, hey, this bag doesn't have the toxic ingredients, blah, blah, blah. So you can look for those details. Um, but I would honestly go for more of like an air popped one where you can either do it yourself and there are plenty of videos out there and go to YouTube and type in how to make your own popcorn and they'll show you. There are definitely healthier ways to make it on your own and non-healthy ways. But um, I, like I said, used to do Boom Chicka Pop. And so if you look on the back and you look on the ingredients, it's like really plain and simple. It, it sounds healthy. You literally just have corn that's non-GMO. They usually have sunflower oil in there and then like salt or like cane sugar. So it's like four ingredients. Looks really simple. And you're thinking, so what, what's wrong with this? And that's what I used to think. That's why I'm like, who cares if I down the whole bag? <laughs> yeah, my tummy's a little upset later. But what I want you guys to realize is that, yeah, it's non-GMO. Yeah, it's uh, gluten-free. But when you have those oils, that's where you got to be careful. Not only is corn one of the top six inflammatory foods, but you have to realize that when it comes to sunflower oil, palm oil, um, soybean oil, canola oil, a lot of those ones that are used in there, guys, even if it says non-GMO, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, they didn't use some type of solvent. It's a chemical in order to make it pop so it's not expeller press. There's just a lot of other toxicity that isn't listed on the label. And guys, this goes with any food, but especially popcorn, because I know so many of you guys just <laughs> commenting on here, hitting the like button like crazy. This is a big, it's a hugely consumed food. So just keep that in mind when it comes to the popcorn that you're choosing. Try and go with something that's air popped. Um, try and do something that's organic if possible. Erica said she had her some today, right? Like we still consume this stuff, right? Like I still have it every once in a while, but at least consume it smart. I don't bring it in the house because that's just not smart for me. I will eat the entire bag. So just do what's best for you. <laughs> Maybe have your husband or your significant other hide it. Mike has to do that every once in a while or put it out of sight. But, um, you know, if you have the wrong type of oils, guys, and you're consuming that on a regular basis as well, what <laughs> Erica says, no, actually, she meant cookie dough that she consumed. <laughs> yes, girl, yes. So when it comes to the oils that are used in any of these products, especially popcorn, you're looking at sunflower oil and like a lot of the other more processed oils, you just gotta be careful how much of it you consume. Guys, it is in moderation. It absolutely is in moderation. But if you're anything like me and you house popcorn, this is what I want to make you aware of. If you eat a whole bag to yourself or you cannot stop re-digging in that bag of Boom Chicka Pop, just be aware. Becky just said she had some today and <laughs> she has that doggone tummy ache, right? Because I can't do just a little bit. I can't. So you just need to witness and uh, acknowledge your weaknesses. <laughs> I know Michelle just said, yeah, many are awful omega-6 oils. If I want to get really sciencey, just like Michelle was saying, omega-6 oils, guys, are the things that like, like you want the omega-3s. Omega-6s, when you're having like this imbalance of ratios with like canola oil, palm oil, um, sunflower oil, that's when you start to get into like the more dangerous zone when it comes to heart health and um, all of those other icky things of the body. So if you guys have any questions about certain types of popcorn or you want my approval or you want my thoughts on something, as always, post it below. But I hope this helps you make better choices for you and your family. Mwah. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.